Greetings. I called in this special town meeting to order at 7.05 p.m. I'm Connor Deegan, your town clerk, and currently acting as your presi acting presiding officer, as our moderator, Thomas Garabedian, was unable to attend, and our deputy has yet to be appointed. If we'd please rise and stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. As we get started, please be sure that you have a copy of the handouts which have been provided in the corridor outside of the auditorium. Counters have been assigned under the direction of Muriel Kramer. Now, I will just read the rules of the meeting and the bounds of the hall. Non-voters, should have a paper pass and be seated in the first few front rows on my right. Media members may sit in the first row in the center. Please, no standing in the aisles during the meeting other than to address the meeting. Eating and smoking are not permitted in the hall. Cell phones should be muted, but use is allowed. Only registered voters are entitled to sit in the voting areas. Exceptions are limited to town council and those town employees who are participating in the meeting. Anyone who wants to speak should rise, come to a microphone, and ask to be recognized by the moderator. When recognized, please state your name and your street address. Please be clear in stating your position. Keep your comments brief and on point so that we can get everything moving along. Only those who are recognized by the moderator can speak and they should stop when asked by the moderator. A speaker will have two minutes to speak unless the moderator allows an extension of time. A speaker may have a second opportunity to speak only when all others have had a chance to enter the discussion. <coughs> Any and all discussion must be directed strictly to the article that is under consideration. All questions will go through the moderator and we do not allow debating. Please do not stand other than to address the moderator or to cast your vote. If you're proposing an amendment of any kind, you must state it at a microphone and it must be written legibly and presented to the amendment desk at the back of the hall. It can be displayed on screen and to the moderator, so please be respectful of meeting members' time and if you have any amendments, please have them pre-written out quickly and get them back there as soon as you can. Finally. We're here participating for the betterment of our town. Let's maintain civility and keep our minds open to persuasion. Contrary viewpoints strengthen our understanding of the issues before us. The debate will enrich us, and through our discussions, we will find the best course for our town. We are now ready to start the meeting, and as your town clerk, I will now read the call and return of the warrant. To the Constable of Hopkinton in the name of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, you are hereby required to notify and warn all inhabitants of the town of Hopkinton qualified to vote in elections and in town affairs of the special town meeting warrant this day, Monday, February 11, 2019. Hereof fail not and make due return of this warrant with your doings thereon to the clerk of said town of Hopkinton at the time and place aforesaid, given under our hands this 11th day of February 2019. The first order of business is to appoint a deputy moderator. I nominate Ellen Rudder to serve in that capacity. All those in favor, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? It is unanimous. We are now ready to begin. I will go ahead and hand off the reins to our deputy town moderator as the acting presiding officer, and I will continue my role as the clerk of the meeting. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. So we're going to start tonight with Article 1, unpaid bills from previous fiscal year. I'll turn it over to Mr. Manning to read the motion. Okay. Article 1, unpaid bills from the previous year. Uh, we move the motion as printed in the Warrant Articles and Motions document. Thank you. So I understand the Appropriation Committee recommends approval. 
Yes, we recommend approval. And Mrs. Wright, I believe this Board of Selectmen also recommends approval? Board of Selectmen recommends approval. Thank you. Is there any discussion about this motion? Seeing that there is no discussion, we will take a vote. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Because this is a vote that requires a nine-tenth majority, once we have one nay, we need to do a standing vote. I will ask anyone who is for this article to please stand up with your yellow, I mean, sorry, your orange pass to be counted. Can someone please close the doors? While we're voting, we need the doors to be closed. As you finish counting, you can come to the mic and um, let me know. We have 37 on this side. Thank you. Pardon me? 38 on the left. at the stage where, um, but Connor's going to check the voters, I mean the, the um, election. So, I'm counting that, waiting to get the um, Center is 58. Sorry. 58? Okay, I'm just waiting for Connor to count um, the election workers who are still in the cafeteria. We need to make sure they're counted. I think we can go ahead and also count the nays at this point. If you are voting nay, please stand and hold your orange ballot. on the left. Oh, sorry. Okay, I need to declare the stage and just so it's not confusing to folks, the stage counts the th people up here who can vote, the folks at the tables, two people from HCAM, and there are still a number of workers in the cafeteria. So 25 is not me just doubling up the number here. So there were excuse me, 25 yeses on the stage, 37 on the right, 38 on the left, 58 in the center. Um, so I think we're... For no's there is zero in the center. Thank you. Yep. So the total is 158 to three. This article passes. Article two, the supplemental appropriation for repair of Lake Maspinock Dam. Mr. Manning. Okay, article, article two, supplemental appropriation for repair of Lake Maspinock Dam. Uh, we move the motion as printed in the warrant articles and motions document. Essentially, I'll just describe this very quickly, that it's uh, for the amount of $140,000 uh, to add to what was previously voted at a previous 
or sorry, at a previous town meeting for a total of $250,000. For this particular case, bids came in much, a little bit higher than what was initially anticipated, hence the additional request for funds. And Mr. Manning, the um, Appropriation Committee recommends approval? Yes, we recommend approval. Okay, and Mrs. Wright, I understand the Board of Selectmen also does? Board of Selectmen recommends approval. I don't know if we have a representative from the Capital Improvements Committee, but I do know that they also recommended approval. Oh. Alton Chen, Sorry. Capital Improvements recommends approval. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Seeing that there is no discussion, we will call a voice, a voice vote. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed? And this passes. Article three, supplemental appropriation for fire communication system. Again, Mr. Manning. Yep. Article three, supplemental appropriation for fire communication system. Uh, we move the motion as printed in the warrant articles and motions document. Essentially, this is another uh, for to complete the communication system. Um, our funds were needed than were initially appropriated at a previous town meeting. Um, another $57,750 for a total of $157,750. Again, this is, uh, that's it. Okay, and the Appropriation Committee recommends approval on this? Uh, yes, Appropriation Committee recommends approval. And Mrs. Wright? The Board of Selectmen <laughs> recommends approval. Thank you. And the Capital Improvements Committee? Capital Improvements recommends approval. Okay, is there any discussion on this article? Okay, so we'll do another vo voice vote. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, this passes unanimously. On to Article 4. The sponsor of this is the Board of Selectmen. Approval of tax increment financing agreement with Lycan Bioscience. Mrs. Wright. The Board of Selectmen um, moves the motion as presented in the motions document. Thank you. I understand that um, Mr. Rotuno from Lycan would like to do, sorry, go ahead. You have a presentation. Okay. If, if you may. If you oh, may. Yes, I'm sorry. So before we get the Lycan presentation, we will have Mrs. Wright do a presentation from the Board of Selectmen. Everyone hear me? Okay. Thank you, Madam Moderator. Uh, good evening. I'm Claire Wright, Chairman of the Board of Selectmen, and uh, thank you to everyone for coming out tonight on this February evening for this uh, important special town meeting. Before uh, the LICAN representative speaks to the plans uh, that LICAN has for, um, uh, for coming to Hopkinton, I'd like to take a few moments to speak on the behalf of the Board of Selectmen to um, quickly go over what is meant by a tax increment financing agreement to explain the Board of Selectmen's rationale for supporting this art article and also to address the safeguards that are in place to limit the risk to our town. Um, a TIF or tax increment financing is an economic tool that it is allowed to municipalities under state law to encourage redevelopment and reinvestment in underutilized properties through public and private partnerships. Sometimes in perhaps urban or other settings, this might apply to blighted or abandoned properties. In our case, uh, we're talking about an underutilized property, the property at 97 South Street, which, um, as you probably know, there are a lot of vacant spaces on South Street right now that are not um, as productive for our town as they could be. 
So the TIF grants tax relief to allow those companies to reinvest in those properties and bring new economic vitality and long-term economic benefits to the town. A tax increment is the difference between the beginning assessed value, that would be the, the real estate value of the property in its unimproved state, and the new assessed value going forward once the improvements have been made. And these improvements can be rehabilitation, uh, new construction, or new equipment in the property. So under tax increment financing, the base value, the base real estate value will be paid. It's being paid now and it will continue to be paid. I would mention as an aside that occasionally when properties are unused, uh, things can deteriorate and possibly even lose value. But um, that aside, the base value continues to be, to be paid to the town. It is the added value, the value that's brought in by the investment of the company for which tax relief is granted. Um, I would also mention that in the case of a town reassessment of the value, and we know very often our properties keep going up because the values continue to be reassessed. Should the base value of all properties in town rise, that new reassessment value will be paid. The tax increment benefits only fall on value that is added by the project, not value that is added because of a town-wide reassessment, only value that is added because of the project. Uh, Mass state law allows tax increment financing for up to 100% and as long as 20 years. The TIF that we're discussing tonight over Lycan is not that aggressive. Um, we are talking about a TIF that would last for a period of 10 years on a sliding scale. The uh, first three years, the tax relief would be 90%. The next two years, it would drop to 80%. Um, so that's 80, 90 and 80 for the first five years. Then it will drop for the next two years to 50%. And for the remaining three years, that would be years eight, nine, and 10, it will drop to only 20%. A few words about the rationale for why the Board of Selectmen has come to support this, this article. Clearly, this promises economic activity and vitality throughout our town and vitality for a long underutilized property. There will be increased tax revenue both in the short term and in the long term, both as it increases in the course of the TIF and should all go well as we hope it would, going forward after the 10 year period there will be 100% tax revenue from the improvements made. The TIF Agreed, agreement with LICAN also includes some excellent prospects for jobs here in Hopkinton. Their agreement includes bringing 125 new jobs to the town with a priority given to Hopkinton, resi um, to Hopkinton residents, excellent well-paying jobs. These jobs are going to be in a clean, safe environment and like hands manufacturing process is a fairly low water user, unlike other properties that have been up on South Street in the past. They have pledged to use local contractors, vendors, and suppliers, both in the construction phase and also in their operation phase. And they have also pledged to some important community partnerships with our town. They will develop a student internship program for students from the Hoppington High School in collaboration with our superintendent of schools. And they will also develop an employee volunteer program to give back to our town through a variety of community organizations. And this will be coordinated with our town manager. And of course, as you can imagine, building and permit fees uh, during their construction process will also flow into the town. A couple words, too, on the big picture um, economic considerations. 
it's not hard to see the ripple effect that bringing in more economic activity is going to have throughout our local economy with increased support and uh, service spending. Our town finance team also uh, put together some interesting statistics about uh, economic vitality and particularly technology, uh, technology jobs that showed that the local impact of technology jobs is estimated to be up to six times the actual investment, the actual direct spending done by a company, six times the stimulus within the local area. And also there's economic research that would suggest that in these innovation type industries such as LICAN, there tends to be a clustering effect that other like industries and complementary industries will come in to one area where there is a good source of supplies and services. And last but not least, I would mention the importance of, of strengthening our economic base on our credit rating. Hopkinton has an excellent credit rating and if we keep our economic base strong and growing, we will maintain that excellent credit rating. And for all the borrowing we do on new schools, new libraries, new DPW, senior centers, and on and on, what we pay to borrow that money has a direct effect on your tax bill. So it's very important for us to keep our strong credit rating. One last category is the safeguards. What are the risks to Hopkinton? I think probably the biggest risk would simply be a lost opportunity. What might have been, whether this article is not supported this evening or whether Lycan does not succeed in Hopkinton, which we hope would not be the case. The tax relief that is granted under a TIF is structured retroactively. And what that means is that the company must meet its performance standards in a, in a year before it receives the tax relief. So unlike some agreements and contracts where there's a clawback arrangement where you need to try to recoup funds, there's nothing to, there's nothing to recoup. The town does not grant the relief until the company has performed, has met its obligations. So that's a strong protection for the town. Lycan cannot apply for any abatements during the course of the TIF. And TIF agreements have strong reporting requirements, both to the state and to the town. At the state level, they must report to the Economic Assistance Coordinating Council on the production of jobs and capital investment. And in the town, they must report to our Board of Assessors again, on job creation, on hiring, and on the use of local vendors. If there is any lack either of performance or of reporting, they, list, they risk the loss of their TIF certification. So in summary, the Board of Selectmen supports this article because we see that it has a strong potential for increased tax revenue, for a revitalization of underutilized and an unproductive site, and it promises economic benefits that are both broad as well as specific that will add positively to Hopkinton's quality of life and vitality. And now, with your permission, Madam Moderator, I would request to um, allow the representative from LICAN, Mr. Anthony Rotano, to address the town meeting. Uh, and speak a bit about LICAN and its plans for Hopkinton. Thank you, Mr. Rotuno. Thank you, Madam Chair. And uh, first of all, let me thank uh, Norman Kamalo and his team for the effort he's put forth to attract LICAN to come to Hopkinton also like to thank the Board of Selectmen for their unanimous support of this TIF and the Chamber of Commerce for uh, their outreach and support all along. Thank you very much. Again, I'm Tony Rotuno. I'm the CEO of uh, Lycan Bioscience. And thank you for the opportunity to speak with you tonight. Uh, we'll go to slide one. Uh, Lycan Bioscience is an emergency uh, biotech company. 
focused on the manufacture of cell and gene therapy specifically. Uh, the company plans to lead the way in manufacturing clinical products. Uh, just a little background there. Most of the products, there's only a, less than a handful of cell therapies approved right now in the world. This is personalized medicine. Uh, it's gained a lot of traction in the last couple of years. Um, and in the last couple of months, if you pay attention, you've seen some mighty big deals. Uh, Bristol Myers Squibb paid $74 billion for a company named Celgene. Uh, there's been buyouts of Juno and Kite. So there's been over $100 billion spent in this industry in the last six months. So this is the next generation of therapy, uh, and we're excited to be uh, so early in the process. Uh, our focus will be on uh, cancer treatment uh, initially. Uh, that's, uh, that's where we'll, uh, we'll spend most of our time uh, over the next five years focused in oncology. Uh, a little bit about these processes, they're, they're very much less invasive uh, than current therapies, certainly less invasive than chemotherapy and radiation. Uh, using your patient's own blood cells or platelets or tumor, piece of piece of their own tumors, and then we get them back to the patient and it's reinfused or reinjected. So the, the actual uh, outcome is much better for the patient and the safety profile is, is much better than typical therapies. Uh, slide two, uh, Lycan, Lycan Bioscience will provide our products directly to medical centers, hospitals, biotech companies, pharmaceutical companies, anyone that has a process uh, here in uh, Massachusetts, companies like uh, Sanofi, Genzyme, or any biotech companies here, Mass General, UMass, uh, the companies at the forefront of innovation and technology, these products are extremely difficult to manufacture. Uh, the logistics around them are very very tough because of the personalized nature of the, of the, uh, the drug itself. Uh, a lot of them were very short time to get from uh, the patient to a manufacturing site like Lycan and then back, in, uh, back to the patient. Uh, Lycan will make a difference in patients' lives throughout the world by improving medical outcomes and quality of life. Uh, just to go back, I worked on the first product approved in the world, uh, cell therapy approved, a uh, product called Provent for a company called Dendrion. Uh, in 2010, and we manufactured, myself and my team have manufactured over 30,000 commercial lots uh, of that drug, which have given men with prostate cancer uh, a much better quality of life and a much longer life uh, than they would have had with just typical therapy. Uh, next slide. Lycan has identified a manufacturing site in Hopkinton, Mass, which is on 90, at 97 South Street. Uh, we've con we conducted a very detailed search nationwide uh, over the last two years. And uh, the Hopkinton site is at the forefront now and is our number one uh, choice to locate here. We're currently in Arizona. Uh, next slide. Our investment plans, the, the site that we're looking at is about 63,000 square feet. Uh, we plan to invest up front about $12 million uh, and 10 million in construction costs and 2 million in personal property. So a very hefty investment for us, and that's why we're here for the TIF agreement, is uh, most of our, you know, our struggle will be in the beginning years. It shouldn't be an issue, you know, after year five, we should be very well established in manufacturing uh, routinely. Uh, next slide. Lycan's going to create at least 125 permanent full-time jobs over a five-year period. Um, blend of talents, skills, including engineering, lab techs, manufacturing, assembly, quality control, quality assurance, sales, office administration, uh, the typical gamut that you would see. Uh, and what's not shown here is uh, those, a lot of those jobs will not require a formal college degree. We will take very smart high school grads or kids with uh, one year biotech course, people that want to not only have a, a job, but they want to have a career. Uh, and that's, that's what Lycan will uh, provide for anyone that has the, the will to do what they need to do. Again, we're, you know, these, these, are not on, these are totally unlike any drugs that are on the market right now. There's no inventory. You know, what you have in your hand is you know, a person's life. And if you screw up, you know, it's not good because it's not going on a shelf to be tested again. So uh, 
you will truly have a uh, person's life in your hands, and uh, that's the kind of people we want to be focused, dedicated, uh, have a passion, take pride in what they do, and uh, we'll, we'll give them all the rest. We'll do all the training. Average salaries, very, very nice, 98000 not including benefits. Uh, so, again, low level coming in, 50 or 60000 then all the way up the chain. Next slide. Company empl uh, employees plan to spend annually with local businesses. Uh, I do a lot of that myself. Worked in, Hop <laughs> worked in Hopkinton for 15 years. A lot of faces are familiar. I left in late 08, uh, but was here since 94. Uh, so like, Hopkinton's close to my heart. It's the second longest place I've ever been in my life. I lived in my hometown in New Jersey for 34 years, but this is second. We will spend at restaurants, hotels, retail establishments, corporate services, industrial services. Don't forget, we don't have any of our own products. So everyone that comes to work for Lycan, that means a couple things. That means Lycan has zero risk of failure. The product failure to Lycan doesn't mean anything because the next product's behind it. The failure may have, will uh, certainly affect the sponsor company. But, it, you know, failure of a drug to Lycan doesn't have the kind of impact it typically would on a drug company because we don't own our own drugs. We just manufacture and get paid. And as long as those products keep going through the regulatory cycles, and there's over a thousand in the line right now, which means that a thousand of those products have to go through phase one, phase two, and hopefully phase three testing if they're that lucky to make it, uh, plus the ones that come up behind it. So there's 3,000 opportunities for Lycan to manufacture right now, today, without anything else being developed, and very little capacity in the country to produce them, and very little know-how. So Lycan can be here forever. As long as we deliver, we deliver on what we commit to, we promise, and we give what we promise, uh, there's no need for Lycan to ever go out of business. Lycan should continue to expand, and expand. Next. The TIF agreement com uh, commitments, uh, 12 million project investment, 125 full-time jobs. Again, that's the minimum. Uh, we made that commitment, that's in the TIF agreement. That's, there's likely to be more. Uh, $98,000 annual salary, average. We will hire qualified Hopkinton residents. Again, we're FDA. Uh, controlled. So what I mean by that is apples to apples. If someone's as qualified in Hopkinton as someone is from Boston, the Hopkinton person is going to get the job. Uh, we will hire qualified Hopkinton vendors best we can. Again, we're a GMP manufacturing facility, so there's some regulations that these, these vendors are going to need to uh, conform to for us to do business with them, but we will give the, the, the nod to Hopkinton vendors. Uh, we will refrain from seeking any tax abatements. Uh, water usage in this kind of product is extremely limited. Uh, being an old pharmaceutical guy and biotech guy, we used to use hundreds of thousands of gallons of water a day. We used, I think we made, we committed to 4,000 gallons a day or something like that. And we don't, that's mainly for cleaning. We don't use any water in the process. Uh, we will implement an internship program. I'm very much uh, in favor of that, my CFO, David Dautel, is the same. I uh, want to get here. In fact, we will come to, if we're given the opportunity, present, start at the middle school level, to get the kids interested in what is a uh, cell therapy manufacturing company. Not many people know what that is. I wouldn't have if I didn't do it. So get them interested before they even go to high school and get them focused on maybe there's another opportunity here. Not everybody wants to go to a four-year school, potentially. They want to go to work after high school. And we'll certainly come and talk to the high school kids and show them what it is. We'll give tours routinely of like and sight so they can see uh, what a high-tech manufacturing site looks like and uh, for cell therapy. It's still a little bit different than a pharmaceutical or biotech site. And uh, we will implement an employee volunteer program. You know, we want to be a good neighbor. Uh, we will help with food banks or however you guys see fit for us to help. But myself and my team, uh, they're really in this industry because they are focused on 
patient's quality of life, which extends toward you know, how they will deal with the community. Uh, it's not easy to work in this business. There's a lot of pressure. The pressure to do right every time is constant. So uh, we're not going to add any make-believe pressure. So it's already uh, the mindset of the people that come, come for Lycan is to help out people, to be socially involved, to help people that need help. That's, that's why we do what we do. You couldn't do it if, you, if you're in it for just for the money, and the money's great. You wouldn't be able to do it. You, you, you need another calling you know, because it's tough every day. As I said before, we manufactured 30, over 30,000 commercial lots for men with prostate cancer in our in a fully manual process. There's no automation here. There won't be any automation for years and years and years, but lichen will be three lichens by the time there's automation for cell therapy. So that's, that's not coming anytime quickly. You'll see that in newspaper articles sometime, but fully manual processes where people have to know what they're doing every day. Every day they have to do the same thing the right way. And our success rates were greater than 99.5% quarter over quarter over those 30,000 lots. Outstanding performance. So we'll do the same thing here. That's the kind of training these, these people have that come to work with us. In conclusion, I thank you for coming out, uh, spending time with us. I know it's a Monday night, it's tough. Uh, and hopefully you'll see it in, in your hearts to vote uh, to approve like and to come to Hopkins. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rotuno. Is there any discussion about this article? I'd like to remind folks when you come to the mic, please say your name and your street address. In order to give everyone a chance, we'd like to try to limit your comments to two minutes. Russell Grieve, 24 Nicholas Road. On page three, there are a couple of graphs, or not graphs, but charts, one of which is devoted to real estate and 90% and et cetera, sliding scale going down. The bottom of the page uh, deals with personal property. And uh, there are a couple of things I have a question on. One is uh, that last sentence, I think it's the last sentence, uh, until the company, beginning in fiscal year 2021, until the company is designated by the Massachusetts Department of Revenue as a manufacturer. Isn't it already a manufacturer? Or what does that designation mean in terms of time, money, and or taxes? Okay, is that a question that you can answer, Mr. Rotuno? Is there someone else who wants to answer? Um, you can, I think you can come to that mic there. If you don't mind introducing yourself, please. Madam Moderator, my name is John Neese. I am not a Hopkinton resident, but the principal assessor for town. The M, capital M designation is granted by the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. So the company might be a manufacturer, but they have to go through a process with the state in order to get the M designation. If the M designation is granted and there are some other companies in Hopkinton with that, then they are exempt 100% from personal property taxes. Thank you. Well, is that, that a difficult thing to get, that designation M? I can't speak for the state. Uh, the company expects to be able to get the designation, but it is a state approval process. So I think I've just been told that if this uh, designation manufacturer comes in, all of these, uh, the chart about personal property will revert to zero. There won't be any taxes on it. Okay. So the answer I just heard um, from Mr. Miar is our um, town attorney is that if they do not meet the requirements of the TIF, 
the tax would go to 100 percent. Thank you. Is that right? No. Okay. Uh, Mary Jo Lafreni, you're 18 Walcott Valley Drive. Um, I'm rising in support of this TIF because the building has been unoccupied for two to three years and it does deteriorate and this will allow for renovation, it will allow for jobs, it will allow for a lot of things. We have had TIFs in this town before. Some have been successful and some of them have been rescinded because they have not been able to live up to the requirements of the TIF. So therefore with good oversight, uh, I have no problem. I think it's a step forward for all of us. Thank you. Robert Levinson, 13 Smith Road. Uh, thank you both for the uh, presentations. Much appreciated. Given the attractiveness of the business model that was described, I'd like to know what, the, what would happen if the company was acquired? What happens to the agreement? I'm not sure who we would direct that question to. One second. You said if the company, if Lycan was acquired, yes. does the yeah. TIF go with them is sort of what you're asking? Yeah, oh, what, yeah, what, what, what happens? happens to the agreement? Okay, right. we're checking. Okay. Good evening. Uh, the way this is set up, the uh, each year, there needs to be a demonstration of compliance with all of the job creation obligations, the salary obligations, and the other requirements of the, uh, of the agreement. And if, but only if, compliance has been demonstrated, the um, tax uh, exemption will be applied for the following year. So it's sort of a self-executing -execution, agreement. So um, if this company is acquired by another company, as long as that other company steps into the shoes, there should be no problem for, this, uh, for the town. And if they don't, then we don't give them the exemption. Thank you. Shahidul Manan, 274 Ash Street. Uh, I'm also a member of the Appropriation Committee, but I'm speaking here as a citizen of uh, Hopkinton. I think this is a timely and good proposal for the town, and by striking the right balance with incentives, we need to encourage new companies, new revenue and employment opportunities. And I was heartened to see the presentation, and it seems there's been significant effort to make it a balanced win-win uh, case. So I support this proposal, and uh, certainly, um, encourage this. I do have a question, um, which is if you can share some of your success stories on such trials and productions um, thus far or any use case that could be applicable, as well as uh, another is you mentioned about the uh, internship program, which is very heartening. If you have any details on the program. I think the first question was that do we have, um, where are we right now as far as customers or people coming into the operation? Customers as well as the previous such uh, kind of drug uh, productions and history of some of the trials. So I just want to remind everybody to work through the moderator. Please ask your question through the moderator. Through the moderator. Thank you. Thank you. I, I can tell you that. Uh, We've been going at this for the last two years. Uh, there is very little competition in this space because it's such a new technology, so our competition is, is, is very little. Uh, I can name them on one hand. Uh, so I just yesterday, well, actually Friday, uh, turned down a company that wanted to come to us right away. So there's four or five we have in our pocket. Again, these are phase one and phase two companies. Um, there's only three approved products. So that thousand will have to come somewhere. Uh, and most of them will get our fair share at Lycan. They, they will come to Hopkinton. Um, again, they need to all go through the regulatory cycle. Uh, phase one trial is safety dedicated. There'll be 20 patients, potentially 20 to 30. Phase two, probably about 100. 
to 200 phase three, three to 500 patients. Uh, Lichen's facility is going to be built like none other, none other that exists now in the country. We're gonna be built for throughput, not to rent space. So our competition really rents space um, where they could get two or four patients a month, we could get 20, 30 a day through. You know, and I don't want to take your whole night speaking about it, but we're only talking about numbers here. But, but the, the back side of that coin is that these people are very sick patients. So if you're only doing two, four, six a, a month, it doesn't take you long to figure out that, well, 24, 26 people didn't get what they need. And they're very sick. So like, lichen will definitely forget the numbers, forget how well we'll do. You know, lichen will certainly, if not save people's lives, which we likely will, uh, it will make the quality of life, life much better, much faster than the patients that can't get these products right now because they can't be manufactured. The internship program, as soon as we're up and running uh, and we have a, a core team that's trained uh, and we're up and running, uh, we intend to be running by the first quarter of next year, or by the end, making four human use product. If we close the deal by April 1st, uh, we'll be running by the end of the year or, or early in the first quarter. As soon as we have a team trained well enough that can handle the business and bring in interns where we can train them and show them the business, we'll bring them in very quickly. Does that answer your questions? It does. Thank you. Thank you for sharing the details. Okay. Thank you. Yes. Hi, I'm Megan Carvalho from 23 Yale Road. Um, I admire the, the company's commitment to good jobs. Um, however, the only way that I know to guarantee good jobs is through the collective bargaining process. So I would ask the moderator if the company would commit to um, neutrality if their employees wanted to form a union. Mr. Rotuno. See, being very old, I've had a lot of experience already. So I am a, a former Teamster uh, in the pharmaceutical business. I started my career in 1977. Uh, Beecham Laboratories, big pharma manufacturing company, now part, now part of GlaxoSmithKline. Uh, I was in a union for five years, and then I got promoted to supervisor, and I was out of the union. So I managed the guys that was there. Got into biotech in 88 in Andover. Uh, and then into, I came here in 1994 in Saragin, spun out a company with Boston University called Marathon Biopharmaceuticals. And I can tell you that I'm not opposed to union or uh, collective bargaining. Uh, however, with the benefits package that we were going to provide, there's salary benefits, uh, bonus plans, time off, uh, I would be shocked if they would want to pay union dues for something that they're not going to be able to get any impact from. But I will leave it up to them. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Devin Rudder, 5 Palomino Drive. Um, I just want to say that I'm very excited about the idea of an internship program. Um, I'm a high school student, and this past summer um, I was able to participate in an internship program in Boston. And I think having that kind of um, innovative internship program right here in town um, would be a really positive thing for our, our students. So I really appreciate that, that uh, the company is committed to, to doing that. Thank you. Sean Kimball, 64 Teresa Road. I rise in favor of the TIP. Um, I'm personally a tax advisor for a software company in Natick. And I was fortunate to be part of three TIPs for the town of Natick. And I've noticed that the benefits that the town of Natick has received from those TIFs and its employee base from my employer has been quite substantial. And I look forward to seeing like and being able to do something like that here in Hopkinton. Thank you. Brian Douglas, 14 Greenwood Road. Uh, I also want to speak in favor of the TIF tonight. Uh, personally, I work in the life sciences industry, so I can confirm a lot of what was said tonight from, from LICAN. Um, I would also respectfully disagree with the comment around collective bargaining being the only way to guarantee good jobs because uh, I employ, not well, me personally, my employer uh, employs hundreds of people in this industry and I've had the fortune of managing uh, quite a few of them. Um, 
these are very high paying jobs. Uh, what I can tell you, my wife also works in the life sciences industry. Uh, we get phone calls probably every other week looking to jump companies. Uh, salaries rise at rates higher than uh, general inflation and in other areas. Um, and so I, me personally, I'm not worried about bringing good jobs to the area. I, I know from decades of experience it's going to happen in this industry. Um, and so I just want to voice my support. Thank you. Hi, Laura Davis, 205 Winter Street. I'm just curious, uh, as a contract manufacturer, does Lycan have any current contracts to manufacture these products, or do they have to wait for the regulatory approval of these companies' products to come through? And if they are regulatory approvals they're going for, is it a pre-market approval or 510K device? Mr. Rotuno. Thank you for the question. Again, uh, these companies that we have in hand, we have no customers now because it would be unethical for them to commit uh, to manufacturing because we don't have a site yet or the team in place. They know we will have one shortly. So obviously we've been doing a lot of business development over the past uh, six, seven months or year. Uh, we have multiple companies that are getting ready to come. As far as being pre-approved to uh, manufacture, uh, again, most of these are phase one or phase two companies. Uh, they will not need FDA approval. They'll have to go to the FDA to, to get their clinical trial started, but none of these companies will need FDA approval until they uh, go to phase three, complete a, fee, complete a phase three trial, and then go for market approval. That's 1% of the business right now. 99% of the business we have ac access to instantly. Thank you. Meena Kaushik, 20 Carriagel Road. Uh, very excited to see this presentation and very glad that uh, a company like Lycan has decided to choose Hopkinton. Um, excited about the new jobs and also the high school internship. Um, through the moderator, a question for Lycan is, um, as a CMO, do you already have contracts with uh, um, uh, the, these uh, cell therapy uh, sponsors um, or pharmaceuticals? And if so, what is your pipeline? Is it going to be, how long do you expect um, to be having uh, these? The second question I have is, uh, um, this TIF and the proposed revenue, uh, tax revenue, does it have any impact on the town resident taxes, like our real estate taxes? Does it, um, is it going to benefit us in the short term or the long term? Okay, thank you. I'd ask uh, Mr. Rotuno to answer question number one, and we will get an answer for you on question number two up again, here. Again, our pipeline is one that we've been working on over the last year or so. Uh, we can't have any committed uh, companies signed yet because we do not have the facility, but I can tell you that we have five or six companies that we've been in touch with closely that are ready to manufacture this year. So let me just give a little more clarity there. So as soon as we close this deal, let's say it's April 1st, uh, while a facility is being built, uh, what needs to happen uh, for three to six months before it's ready to go is what's called the technology transfer. So we'll use two customers, I'm gonna take for example, that I know we'll get. Uh, so that transfer of their, doc their, their process, their documentation, their standard operating procedures, their batch records, whatever specifications they have on their product, uh, signing contracts with them, that will take three to six months. So we plan on having at least two of those done uh, this year and ready to manufacture the minute that Lycan is qualified to and validated to manufacture product for human use, those products will be manufactured. We could take those two products as far as uh, what they're called uh, engineering runs. So everything will be done, there'll be practice runs, they're called engineering runs, we'll set specifications with those, we'll get training for our operators. Uh, we'll test everything that we need to at the site. Uh, so by the time they're ready for shipment back to their patients with live product, uh, we'll be ready to go. So that will be in the first quarter of 2020. Thank you. For the second question, Mr. Kamalo, will there be an impact on our taxes from the TIF? 
with your permission, with your permission, uh, moderator, I, I'll defer to the principal assessor or the CFO. Okay. Or both. <laughs> yeah, I've got a, I've got a uh, answer. Tell me if I'm wrong. He says, <laughs> I am Tim O'Leary, the uh, town CFO. So right now in our tax base, every $40,000 in revenue equals about a penny on the tax rate which right now is $17.17. .17. So since this is all new revenue, if we got all the revenue without the TIF, that would be worth about a penny and a half on the tax rate, dropping it to about $17.15. Uh, and at the, bit, the other way to look at it is, since it is new revenue, at the end of the TIF, when we get the full amount projected at this level without additional growth projected, it would be enough to offset about a penny and a half from the existing tax rate. Okay. Thank you. Um, let's see, which side did I go to? I think, I think you're next, oh, okay. yes. Steve Popkiss, 24 Cedar Street Extension. I'm interested in the cost. The, um, what do we have on estimate of services and cost while the manufacturing is going on and when the uh, uh, facility is in, is in operation? Okay, um, Mr. Kamalo, can you answer, or did you under, did you get that question? If if I may, through the town moderator, are you asking about the cost of town services? Yes. What are we paying for? Because nothing comes for free. We get nice revenue, but they have put in a new factory that's going to require fire, police services. Do we have an estimate on that? Generally speaking, the impact on town services, specifically fire, from operations that are on South Street is very minimal. We do not have a specific calculated amount on what that might be. But in general terms, the impact on town services, specifically fire and police, from operations that are on South Street is minimal. May I? continue because I don't, I'm not quite getting the question. I don't think I'm getting the question. Okay, right. if you could try restating it perhaps. Okay. This is an advanced manufacturing facility. It has specific operations. It has specific human uh, materials that it's working with. Do we have any um, advanced fire and police or any other services that we have to provide that might cost more than our normal uh, what we would normally do for, say, a concrete manufacturer. Mr. Kamalo? During our discussions with Lycan, we were very interested in understanding the science behind its operations, as well as if any hazardous materials mm -hmm. would be on site. We were convinced from our discussions with them that that would not be the case. So no additional, no additional cost. Thank you. Madam Moderator, Ken Weissmantle, 145 Ash Street. I move the question. Okay. Before we vote that, is there anyone else who has an objection? Is there anyone who has an objection? Uh, my name is Rajanagan Rajan. I live in 23 Frost Pain Lane. Uh, my question to the moderator is in extension to the last question. Um, particularly because this is a manufacturing uh, company. S sir, I believe that the question is out of order. If you have a specific objection that you want to raise, you may, but th there is no more uh, questions because we have a, a motion on the floor to end the debate. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so we move to a procedural vote. Um, all in favor of ending the debate, please say aye. Aye. Is anyone against ending the debate on this article? Okay, so now we're going to do the vote on the article. So we are voting on whether to agree to this TIF. Everyone in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed? 
it's a simple majority. We declare that this article passes. I would like to ask everybody, I know many people came for just this article. We have two more, and we would really appreciate everybody staying. We can get through them quickly, um, and we appreciate your being here tonight. Okay, we are on to Article 5. This is called the School Department Mitigation Fund. So the, is the school committee doing, doing it? Nancy, are you doing the motion? Thank you. So Nancy Cavanaugh for the school committee. The school committee recommends no action and I make a motion is that, I make a motion for the town to take no action on Article 5. Okay, so this could be a little confusing. Um, if you vote yes, that means we are taking no action on this article. And that is what the school committee recommends. Any discussion? Okay, all in favor, say aye. Aye. All opposed? No. Thank you. Clear majority. Article 5 passes. Article 6, the School Department Stabilization Fund. Um, is this something, um, Mr. Kamalo, you're going to speak to or Mrs. Wright? Mrs. Wright. Yes, the Board of Selectmen recommends no action. Okay, so this is a similar thing. The Board of Selectmen recommends no action on this Looks like there's some discussion. Steve Palkers, 24 Cedar Street Extension. When we have these no actions, I would, off, off, I would awfully like to know why these recommendations are being made. So in this particular case, why is no action being recommended? This, Mr. Popkins, this will be taken up at the annual town meeting. Okay, any other discussion? So voting aye on this means that um, that this is not, there will be no action taken tonight on this article. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? No. Okay, clear majority. With that, I believe, I believe that um, the board will make a motion to dissolve the special town meeting. The board of selectmen. The Board of Selectmen uh, moves that the special town meeting be dissolved. A second. second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? <laughs> Thank you. Have a good night. <laughs>